Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Muscle of Yarn podcast. It's Thursday and it's August. Sixth? I think it is the sixth. Yeah. See outtakes for long discussion about how all days blend together. <laughs> I believe it's the sixth. <laughs> I know, but it's August already. That's like wild. I know. So this is a podcast about yarn and knitting and sometimes crocheting, uh, spinning, and just a lot of things Vermont. Um, and we are a yarn shop in Shelburne, Vermont. Uh, we have a bricks and mortar store that's open uh, for public to come in and shop. And we also have um, a pretty good online store as well. Uh, if you'd like to come check us out and see what kinds of products we have. Um, lots of Vermont stuff. Uh, we try to keep pretty well uh, stocked up on Vermont yarns and local dyers and mm -hmm. We've been growing products. a lot of them lately, a lot yeah. of our local yarns. Nice. nice. Line out. And you can find the store out on all social media as must love yarn. Um, we've got a great group on Ravelry. You can follow us on Instagram. We have a Facebook page, um, all places to come check out and see what we've got uh, going on. And we've got two virtual knit groups too that we're still continuing to host. One on Wednesday evenings from five to seven and one on Sunday afternoons from one to three. Yep. And those are pretty well attended. We had a fun group. <laughs> we got laughing so hard last night. It was really good. Everybody needed a good laugh. It was funny, so yeah. And we have folks joining us from all over Yeah, um, for yep. those groups, which is amazing. Yeah, actually, um, I think there was only three of us, three or four of us that were local. Everybody else was from away. So it's really fun. So cool. A lot of people find this because of the podcast. And some people actually just like did a search for virtual knit groups. And that's how they came across us. And so we've had, we've been meeting some really fun people that way. So it's nice. been a lot of fun. Nice. That's yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I'm Angela. And I'm Kelly. And you can find me out on social media, Instagram and Ravelry as Junior Bird Kid. And you can find me on Ravelry as Kelly Spins and on Instagram as Kelly O Spins. And no podcast or store would be complete without a mascot. Well, maybe that's not true, but I'm making it true. <laughs> so uh, we do have uh, we do have mascots. Uh, the meerkat has become our uh, our animal, and uh, this started with just some off random offhand comment by me a couple of years ago, and it has taken a life of its own. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so these guys have their own Instagram page as well. So this is Gage. And this is Swatch, and this is Stitch, and we have a few more that hang out at the store uh, that have yet to be named because we're really delinquent with that. Um, but this is the main crew. Uh, the main crew that you'll see out uh, on the Instagram page, and feel free to follow uh, that with the shenanigans. Um, this past weekend, I did catch a really funny picture with them and my dog right in the middle of like shaking her head and so it's super goofy. Uh, we were at the river <laughs> swimming, <laughs> so that was fun. Um, and you know occasionally we have some back and forth between their page and my page because I manage both so you know come check out what's uh, going what's going on. Uh, currently having a, uh, a taco off with uh, Amy's husband John so <laughs> I know I saw that he was he's traveling across he was traveling across country and he's so funny he is funny so so that's super fun all kinds of fun things happening over on social media um, I know his food looks so good and it oh. makes me hungry whenever I see his post I'm like oh man <laughs> so I'm so jealous uh so I'm you know left with having to make my own fancy tacos um <laughs> which I have and my children mm -hmm. love them they were super excited nice. to have fancy tacos so um William was picking out some more recipes for fancy tacos so we'll see mm -hmm. excellent do another batch so does he like to cook he on, he's on and off. Like he'll, 
get sort of like, oh, I want to do it. And then by the time you get all the ingredients and get ready to go, he's like, oh, I don't really, I'm not in the mood. Like you yeah. have to catch him in the right mood. But yeah, he, yeah. he can be into it. It seems like something he might enjoy. So. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he, he's hit or miss with the knitting too. Yeah. Um, his knitting bag was MIA for a while. Um, <laughs> clearly that was my fault or so I was told. And like, of course. Not in charge of your stuff. You did something to it. <laughs> I, yeah. Um, actually, it turned out to be true. I had <laughs> cleaning up one of the rooms and I like pitched it in a closet and it was a closet where I keep some of my yarn stuff. And so I had been in and out of the closet. So I was like, I know I've seen it somewhere, William. It is here somewhere. Like, I don't know why you keep telling me you don't know where it is. It's here. I've seen it. <laughs> and like a week or so ago, I opened the closet and I was like, oh, oh, ooh, oops, there's his bag right there. Like he would not have looked in this place. <laughs> so one time, yes, it was my fault. Um, anyway yeah he um oh he came he came in when we were on the business meeting on Sunday and was sitting and wanting to sort of knit he got it out and showed me and then I don't think actually knit anything yeah which is well, kind of know. you know um but Miss Abigail is starting to show some interest in wanting to have her own project okay. so she's yeah. four um she's close she might Have be able you to done do any finger knitting or crochet chains or anything like that? No, I could probably show her some of that because she might with like a bulky yarn and a bigger crochet hook just sit and, and do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. She sits on my lap a lot and we knit together. So she'll put her hands on top of mine and yeah. we'll do. She's there for like 30 seconds and then she's like, okay, I'm good. Um, so we'll just keep doing that for a while. Like it's not like I don't have any shortage of yarn or needles or project bags for her to have one mm -hmm. um, at some point here. So we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, all right. So where were we in our, like, I don't even know. We just got totally distracted, which yep. is normal. Totally normal. Welcome. If you're new, <laughs> this is how it normally goes. <laughs> even more so like these last few months. <laughs> Um, I am not wearing any hand knits because it's still the humidity level seems to have dropped quite a bit, but it's yeah. still warm out. It was 59 degrees this morning, and I was so excited, so amazing. It was the best, Good. I know. Good. And so, that was that. It's it that feels kind of like more like September to me, you know, where you yeah. have like the really cool mornings, and then it might get up into the 70s and be nice. Yeah. And that's kind of what today's gonna be like, and then, but I guess, um. This weekend, Sunday, Monday, we're supposed to get high hot again. again. Yeah. yeah. At least it's not going to be back in the 90s and they're talking about lower humidity. So that's good. That's yeah. always a good thing. I don't mind it can be as hot as it wants as long as it's not humid. When it's yeah, the humidity, humidity really is, kills me. Yeah, it really does. <clears throat> yeah. So, so yeah. Yeah, I don't have any hand knits that I'm wearing either. Me neither, but I do have a finished object with me. We do. Do we want to do our, um, we're not doing a pick of a week, but we oh, are. Right. Do you want to talk about that first? Yes, let's do that. Sorry. See, I'm totally off my game. So we normally do picks of the week during this time, um, but we have, uh, we're working on a different project right now. Uh, and we are um, showcasing sort of a <clears throat> prize pack of things that we have dug out of our personal stashes and we've had some donations we've had you know various yeah. vendors and stuff um giving some us of the yarn in here is from one of our viewers too yep so. um and so what we're doing is we're putting these groups of things together and then we are running a fundraiser um, for a uh, specific organization or entity uh, mm -hmm. that's doing uh, uh, good work um, out in the communities and we um, take those donations and you get entries for the prize for every five dollars that you donate and uh, then we draw names and are sending out prizes so this is our is this our fourth one yeah third one fourth one fourth yeah fourth one um so we've got all the information up on our website we'll include the link in show notes although i don't think i did show notes last week 
Yeah, we've been very remiss on those. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I will make sure if you go back to past ones, the link is always the same because we've got one page where we're kind of adding the information and then there's links off of that to the different organizations that we've got um, that we're, that we're going to be donating money, the money to. Uh, so we've donated over a thousand dollars to right now, three different organizations. And then we've raised some more with this, uh, all this donation um, fundraising campaign already and uh, but we are we're gonna leave this one open another week because we weren't able to podcast last week so we didn't get to, sh to show everybody uh, kind of through the podcast what we are gonna be offering up as the, the prize uh, that we're gonna draw so we'll draw that probably next week um, depending on what our schedules if we can mesh our schedules up um, but so, uh, the, the money that we're raising for this uh, fundraising campaign is going to the Equal Justice Initiative. So you can find out all the information, uh, there's links on our site, uh, to, to their website. And so if you want to check out and see the, the good work that they're doing, you can, uh, find that information there. And so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about it here, uh, but so this is the awesome project bag that is stuffed with goodies. And this is one of the project bags from last season on Vermont that Joan Fitzhugh did. And she finds the best batik fabrics. Oh my God, She yes. does some really amazing uh, bags with some cool batik. So yeah. I love this bag. And if you so. want to see some more of her stuff, come join us on August 15th for the right. virtual marketplace because she's going to be there. I know. That's exciting. I really like Joan. She just, she's just she's the so nicest sweet. person and yeah. she, her bags are so well done. There's a little pocket, a little pocket inside and that little pocket has one of the, actually a couple of the little goodies in there. So we're doing an orange spice herbal body bomb from Woolen and Co. Mm -hmm. Yum. This one smells so good. I love this one. And then we're doing Must Love Yarn, little Kitchener stitch tool. Nice. That was uh, Katrinkles. And then these two of these yarns are actually yarns that uh, one of our wonderful viewers donated to the cause. Um, nice. And then there's this really gorgeous one that Ange also contributed so and that's from into the world and these are huckleberry knits which is nice. um a dyer out on the west coast awesome so she does these really cool tonals so i thought those were kind of you could use them together or you could just find something individually for each of these but um they were kind of fun together two, two skeins right there for uh, the sharon show that's right right yeah <laughs> yeah so um so that's our fun price pack and uh, as I said, you can find out all the details on our website and the button, there's a PayPal button to donate right there. And yes. we try to try to make it easy and keep all the information in one place. So Excellent. Awesome. So we usually do it for two weeks, but as I said, we're going to go one extra week with this one. Um, yeah, because the, we'll, the last time we podcast, we didn't actually have the prez picked, so no. Yeah show it but it's the yep. first you guys have been able to see it on the podcast so exactly so uh those so all this the yarns are uh, fingering weight like a sock yarn so um what else is there anything else i need to say i don't think so we appreciate everybody's donations i'm sure the organizations that we've been donating to appreciate mm -hmm. the donations as well yeah. um and this was just our way to give back um and to to try to take some action and do something. Yep. So. Yep. Um, so all right. Finished objects. Finished objects. Finished. I objects. actually have one, and I finished it at Knit Group last night. Awesome. So one of our high schools here um, does this really great continuing education program. And they were looking for their uh, teacher that usually does the knitting classes, wasn't going to be able to do the classes this year. So they were looking for somebody and I said, sure, I'd love to. I love doing 
beginning knitting classes and that's kind of what they were looking for and we may eventually do some other ones with them too um and they're like you know we're not sure if we're gonna be doing them in person or online you know what's your comfort level with doing stuff online and i'm like well i think as most people are we're kind of all getting used to to doing a lot of stuff online with zoom or you know something else so um they they had intentions of doing them in person, but I actually just got the the call that they're they're going to do all virtual this time. So I I've had some patterns that I really that I use a lot for um, beginning knitting classes, cowls, hats, that kind of thing. Yeah. And um, but because this one was going to be all online, I wanted to make sure I had a pattern that would progress a little bit differently than some of the patterns I had done before. So I just wrote this really um, quick and easy cowl pattern that's, you know, that's knit, but then at the end you get a little bit of purling because I really like to reinforce the knit stitch before people start switching over to the purl stitch because it can get really confusing until you've got that muscle memory built up. So I just did this fun, super bulky cowl and it's kind of big and squishy and uh, and it's and a cute. fast project super fast i mean i did it you know it, it'll take the the beginning and there's a little bit longer but i i did it pretty much all yesterday so um but i'll put it on i'm going to take the microphone off though i'll mute myself so i don't nice super comfy be really nice for for winter super cozy yeah so i mean you can wear it kind of all scrunched up and and cozy or you can even it's big enough where you could pull it down over your shoulders a little bit if you wanted to um, depending on how you want to wear it so it's just super super easy and um, would be a good gift. So even if somebody didn't want to wear something big and bulky for themselves, you know, but had um, somebody in mind, it would be a really fun gift. And, and you know, the timing of the class will work out great so that it would, um, it would be good timing for that. Nice. So, yeah, so I've got to just write up the pattern for this real quick and, um, and but yeah the piece is done. I've got to take some pictures of it so they can put it on their, their website and cool. see if they can get some interest for the class. But yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, let me know if you talk them into the Tunisian uh, knitting class or crocheting class because I, I'd be I think we're going to do that one in January. So. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm doing two knitting classes this fall, one in October, and then the next one will be, I think, in November. And then the Tunisian one um, will be in January. So they, cool. because it's through the school, they follow all the school breaks and everything. So yep. um, they're, they kind of stop doing them around the holidays. And yep. Uh, okay. Good yeah. to know. Good to know. You'll see me there. <laughs> I won't heckle you too. No, I'm just kidding. I won't heckle you. Can you can heckle all you want. <laughs> <sighs> Well, the, the, you know, having it online will make it so much easier for lots of people to attend. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think so too. I mean, I think it's, it's going to be interesting because it, it might change how they do feature things. Even when, you know, we don't have COVID kind of looming over us, you know, they might be able to do, have the teachers teach in person, but also then have a component where they're being recorded and can interact with people virtually if they have a screen set up. So that people that can't be there in person yep. can can still participate. So exactly, yeah, exactly. So cool. Yeah. So I finished. Um, I finished my shawl. Wow. Look yeah. at you go. I didn't work on mine at all. So <laughs> no, right. This is the this is the one that I copied uh, Kelly and finished way before me <laughs> and finished. It's not. I haven't blocked it yet. Um, so you see beautiful it's a little, hand. thank you, little ripply, and it will get bigger because it's garter stitch. Um, so once it gets blocked, the garter will relax, um, and so it will be longer and wider. Um, but it's still pretty good sized right now. Um, so this is um, 
here comes the sun. The sun will come out. I can't even remember what it's called. It's by Savory Netting. Yeah. It's um, a DK weight shawl. If the sun comes. If the sun, the sun when the sun comes. comes something, something like that. Something with sun. We're <laughs> terrible podcasters right now. <laughs> Yep. I don't even know if I, did I start a project? I think I started a project page for mine. I did start a project page. I have not taken finished object pictures, um, mostly because I'm terrible at them. Um, and second, because I haven't blocked the shawl yet. So um, it takes two skeins of the main color and one skein of contrast color. So pretty. I Thank like you. yours. Thank you. I kind of went out on a limb with some different color you are. You're like stash diving and getting like some really cool combinations because of it. I like it. Yeah. Trying to, you know, max mix up my, my wardrobe and colors a little bit. Um, nice. So having some fun. Doing something different. So that's my one FO. Uh, yeah. I have a couple of like random works in progress. I've been trying to do some other things. Like I had that little baby sweater that I knit like finished like a month ago I needed to put ribbon on and sew buttons on so I was doing that last night like I'm trying to you know just get some of those stuff finished because some of them need to get mailed places and like mm -hmm. get them out of my house yep especially if we're gonna be like you know camped out in our houses for the yeah foreseeable winter months and everything oh my God. This it's nice just to get it like this weekend I totally like reorganized like my clothes and my closet like it I was just it was like a hot mess yeah it's mine is a disaster everywhere. I had like a pile of hand knit sweaters on my dresser just I didn't have any place for them to go so like I just as I was finishing them I was literally just throwing them on top of my dresser there was probably like yeah. six sweaters up there it was disaster like a giant garbage bag of like stuff to go to goodwill like I'm just like why do I still have maternity clothes hanging in my closet like literally that was what was happening in my closet <laughs> there's, there's no <laughs> I know I don't have maternity clothes but I've got a lot of clothes that I just don't wear like I you know when when we were had like events and things to go to like I have some dresses and I'm like I have I'm gonna keep one like nice dress that I can wear if we have an event like a wedding or something like that but other than that I don't need like six of them right I just right. don't I don't wear them and it's taking right. up space and it, somebody else can enjoy them great I pants that I don't wear I had shirts like for work and otherwise that I just right. I don't wear like why am I keeping them like just I know. get rid of it yeah get rid of it. so everything's all like cleaned up and like I can find things I know where everything is like yeah so so nice I have to do that very same thing I was looking at my closet the other day and I was like oh <laughs> yeah yeah I just I just I kept looking at that pile of sweaters and like you've spent all this time to make these sweaters and you've yeah. literally just thrown them on your dresser because you don't have any place for them to go like yeah. that's that's not okay. Like you got to fix this yeah. or you're going to get mods. <laughs> and I found a couple of sweaters that I forgot that I had, you know, like it just, they've all been tucked away in weird places and, mm -hmm. Oh, I haven't worn that sweater in a really long time. Yeah. Yep. Yay me. And then I went and I, my kids clothes have now been done too. Cause we did Abigail's wow. and William did his, so like, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo. Um, so anyway, so that was my works in progress. <laughs> nice. Well, my only work, well, no, that's not true. So this FO, which mm -hmm. was very, very short, and then the socks, I can't really show you for the seasons of Vermont Locks, but I have one done. <laughs> And then um, I started the other one. So that's how far I am. Nice. I'm getting ready to start. I agreed to test knit for Kelly. Mm -hmm. I better get on it because the box is getting really soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
if I can at least get one done, that will help. So I probably can if the shorty suck. Yeah. Um, I found yarn again, stash. Uh, I've just been continuing to put heels and cuffs and toes on sock tubes. Um, I've just been finding that quite enjoyable lately for whatever reason. Um, You're going to have all kinds of socks and gift socks. and That's, that's the plan. Ditch that's the plan. awesome. Um, so this is sock number one of this sock tube, which is almost done. And... Yeah. What else do I have? Oh, I had the orange, the orange and white and gray ones. I got both the cuffs and the toes done on those. Um, I haven't done the heels yet. I'm trying to mentally decide who they're for, what size I want to make. So that's going to determine where the heel's going to go. Yeah. Um, And so that might just wait because that can just come at any time and the heels are quick once you figure out what size you're making. So those are kind of just hanging out. Um, And then I kind of, I needed something to do, something else to do. And I have, I will admit, I've been struggling with trying to find patterns that um, are catching my eye and make me Mm. want to knit, hence the test knitting for Kelly. Um, Because I just like, just give me a project. Like I need something, somebody just to tell me do this because I'm having a hard time finding ones on my own. So I did pull some DK weight yarn and I had talked about this pattern a while back. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find a page that doesn't have stuff on it that I shouldn't show. I think that one does. Um, So it's the Sharing Creativity DK um, sort of bandana cowl. Mm -hmm. That's cute. Yeah. So you can do this one in either DK weight yarn or fingering held double. Um, And so it's meant to, you know, use scraps or, I mean, you could do it all in one color. Um, So I just, I was just pulling a ton of, ton of scraps. I'm going to show you guys this. I'm pretty sure everybody's reaction to the colors right now are going to be what mine is, which is, look, I just got to power through this section. Um, (laughs) So I've just started a transition of a color that's really different from where the cowl is going. So let me just show it show you so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Oh, I like it. Yeah. So I've just sort of started this yellow transition from sort of the grays and the browns. And so right now it looks really like, whoa. I but, like it. I think it's fun. But this is where I'm going. So these are the colors that are coming. Yeah. So when That's you fun. put all of those together, mm-hmm. like it starts to look not as wild I think it's fun that way anyway isn't it fun yeah it really uh, is something totally different mm-hmm. um these are the legacy fiber arts dk mini skeins that they did last year in the fall colorways for those mm-hmm. Susan B Anderson acorn things and clearly I've done something with those so <laughs> I thought like they- your, your your advent calendar box that's going to be this year's project, I think. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm on a stash roll right now. You I are. Keep it up. I know. Um, yes, this, the advent calendar is still unopened. The box is still unopened in my closet. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I, I figure this is a great use of these mini skates. Mm-hmm. So the brown colored ones are here that were in the box. And there's this yellow one and then sort of these ones that start to um, transition to sort of different colorways. Um, the bottom colors are Malabrigo, some Plomo, and um, uh, Perp, no, I don't know what the two colors are, something. Anyway, um, just, you know, again, leftovers, like trying to use leftovers, and uh, if I get to the top and I, you know, have more, I've got this green, you know, I've got all kinds of just little bits and bobs that I'm throwing in there, so. I have, um, I don't have any others in progress at the moment. I mean, I have lots in progress, but they've been simmering for way too long to even like make an appearance on the podcast. But I do have an upcoming one because I just had a um, sales rep come up, uh, our Baroque sales rep 
she's really fun. She's very dynamic. If you've been to our retreat, then you've met her. She she'll be at the, the marketplace as well. She will be at the marketplace and she's going to be showing uh, all of the new fall yarns and some of the fall designs that are coming out from Barocco. And I got to see them last week. I think that was last week. Yeah. Um, so I just put in our fall Barocco order and they, they are doing some really fun, fun things. Nice. Um, so they have Amy Christopher is in charge of their design team. And she is, I love her designs anyway, but um, for a bigger yarn company, she's doing some really cool things with the direction that they're, they're doing the pattern. So, you know, a lot of people were holding yarns double for, for different patterns and things. They're going to be doing that with Barocco, which I think is great because a lot of the big yarn companies aren't doing that. You know, they're with, especially with their own designs, you might see it in an independent designer, but not in one um, that's designing for the company. So, um, yeah, there's some really, really fun stuff coming out. So I am going to be knitting that little cardigan jacket oh, cool. style thing as a shop sample, which, you know, eventually I'll get to have it back. But, um, but for now, it's going to be a shop sample. It's called Spencer. And actually this, um, so it's two yarns held double, and I'll show you the yarns in just a minute. And the main color that I'm using is the same one that's in here, but the, this kind of secondary color, mine is a little bit different. So that's the main color that they use. And this is Barocco Sesame. Nice. There it is. Um, and this is a wool acrylic ni uh, nylon and cotton blend yarn. So it's really nice and soft. Um, it's got, it's got kind of like these little tweedy nets in it. Um, so it gives it a little bit of interesting texture. This is one of their new colors for this year. It's really lovely. It's kind of it's right up my alley for sure. So the color that they, um, so the yarn that's held with it is a uh, silk mohair and they have one that they're introducing back in for this year and it's called Ariel. And so it's 65% mohair, 35% silk. And it's really, really soft. Sometimes the mohair yarns, um, depending on what scratchy. kind of, yeah, depending on the kind of mohair they're using aren't always soft, but this is really, really super buttery soft. So the color they used in the picture I just showed you was this one, but with a gold. And I thought it'd be kind of fun with this kind of plummy, raisiny, reddish color. That is so, beautiful. Yeah. So I can't wait to, I've, I've held off even swatching it because I was like, if I swatch this and it comes out, I'm going to want to just like sit down and start knitting on it. And I, I had to get, I had to get this piece done and I have to get the sock done. So I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. So, um, so I'm looking forward to that because I think it's going to be really fun. And it's a really, you know, kind of quick and easy knit. It's a lot of stock in it. It's a lot of garter. So, um, and it, I think it's going to be a style that'll appeal to a lot of people. So I have um, a couple of, um, they're, they're yarn baby sizes, but they're not Cece's wool. They're, I think they came from Gail's art. So mm -hmm. she did a big skein as well. And it's a DK, heavy DK, light worsted yarn. And it's, again, there's like 500 and some yards in in the skein and it was in this really pretty purple. I know I couldn't resist buying the purple. <laughs> um, so I got a couple of skeins of those a while back and I've been trying to find a pattern to knit out of that yarn because it's not quite enough to do like a full size sweater. So I was thinking maybe a color work, maybe a something else. Mm. And there was this new pattern that just got published. See, so I figure if I wait long enough, <laughs> that's right something will come up oh. something will come up I'm just trying to pull it up here so I can show you guys um it's actually a short sleeved pullover sweater um it's called Merlot and it's by Jennifer Wood mm. um and this is that's what it looks like okay so it's got this really pretty lace detail on the bottom um it's nice. kind of a-line so it swings swings out this way yeah. but it's also short sleeved I think you could um, and it's got this really cool detail. You can't see it on that one. Let me see if I can pull this up of how they, how she's done the yoke. 
So oh like yeah. The increases for the yep. yoke are very are wider around the shoulder. So it looks kind of like a, the car bath. Remember that the car yeah. bath did that a little bit, I think. Too. Yeah. I didn't make that, but that's kind of what it reminds me of. Yeah. Um, cool. So I think I'm going to use my purple, my purple yarn for that because I have plenty for like most of the sizes because it's a shorter sleeved um, yeah. one. And that one calls for worsted. Um, I think it'll be fine. I like more JP sweaters anyway. Yeah. So that's so the thing. If you know what's in your stash and you wait long enough, there'll be a pat. Yeah. You'll find the pattern. That's right. Something <laughs> will come along. Something will come along that just catches your eye and you're like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's so funny when you when you know that you like if you see a pattern, you're like, I have the perfect yarn for that. That's the and, Yeah, and you just kind of have this like mental list in your your a head. Oh, yeah. Plugh. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. You know. So you have this list in your head. And it's kind of just this running list of, of all of the yarns that are in your stash, whether you really, really remember them or not. But all of a sudden you see something and it just like clicks and you know, you, that one kind of comes up in your memory. So yep. I've had that happen before, if yep. I can actually talk. So that's true. That's, you know, it's fine. We all know what you meant. What you meant. Woo. So, so maybe look for that one. I, once I finish, once I finish at least one of these socks to finish at least one before I cast on a sweater. Cause the same thing will happen, Kel. I'll cast on a sweater and then I'll be like, I'm not working on anything else. I know, I know. So you'll be like, where's my sock? I'll be like, what sock? <laughs> what are you talking about? Then she'll, then she'll hold my, my, sock, um, my sock tubes hostage. She'll be like, well, mm -hmm. look, I'm not doing your sock tubes until you test knit my sock. <laughs> yep. I know I'll have some leverage. Yeah. <laughs> That's, um, oh. it's tonight's cast on and it's a shorty sock. I should be able to knock it out pretty quick. Yeah. So, in yeah. the next like week, at least in the next week, maybe faster. Depends yeah. on how much knitting time I get, but, um, yeah, shorty sock, no problem. Yeah. And it's an, a really easy repeatable pattern. So once you, you know, see how, where it's going, then it's super easy. And nice. Ange does, Ange knows top down socks so. Although she is, like she told me, she's going to try to follow it from the pattern so that she can make, check for any errors. Yes, that is my challenge because <laughs> I will read in, I will mentally fix the mistakes and just read them in to yeah. the pattern. Um, yeah, that does happen when you've been knitting for long enough. You just kind of like, yeah. oh, I know where they're going with this. And you just, so it's hard read, to yeah. train yourself to follow it. Exactly. exactly. Like when you don't know mm -hmm. anything about knitting socks. Yep. Um, so, but so we'll see. That may slow me down a little bit, but <laughs> but we'll. Um, so stay tuned on, and that's those skeins of yarn are big enough that when I decide I need to use them, I will have to go to the store because my ball winder can't um, handle the larger skeins. So I'll have to go. Wind or you can come here. Mine's much smoother than the one at the store. I've got to get some. Oh. I've got to take that one back apart again and. I want to get I want to get one of those standwoods for home because I'm there's enough yarn lines that are coming out with those bigger skeins yeah. yeah um and I have enough of them in my stash that it's if I want to use them it's much more difficult if I have to go to the store or even you know even just coming over to your house trying to facilitate yeah. that versus winding them whenever um yeah so. But if you're dropping yarn off, if you have them with you, then you can. Ooh, maybe I'll do that. And I can just drop them. And then I won't have them to start the project until you release them to me, which will be when the sock is done. I'm going to do that. That actually makes <laughs> sense. That's a good idea, Kel. <laughs> it's like self-imposed rules you know you know what'll happen i'll just find something else to work on <laughs> or you'll come knocking on my door well i really well, need that yarn <laughs> can i have my purple yarn please <laughs> be like where's my sock <laughs> um in my in my car no. um actually that that if you don't mind that's perfect because then that's it's fine. again out of my house it gets wound it'll motivate me to get the sock done so I can get the yarn back so perfect it's a win-win 
and oh. and I know my yarn skeins will come back smoothly wound um, <laughs> because because I have helpers and mm -hmm. I allow them to help because I think it's important but it also means that my yarn cakes are disaster sometimes um, when I go to use them but so it's a win-win all the way around <laughs> Win. Uh, okay, so I won't drop those um, that sock yarn off today. It'll probably be tomorrow because okay. um, I'll okay. grab those other purple skeins and include it. And I also need to grab that skein of mohair as well that we talked about that I was going to drop off for the oh, back. Yep. Stuff. Um, yep. So I'll include those extra skeins and then bring it tomorrow or maybe cool. Saturday. I'll probably try to do it tomorrow. Okay, whatever works. I'm gonna be there Saturday, so. Um. Now that you have all just had, listened to us have a conversation that literally you did not need to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Means nothing to anybody but us, but you know. That's what we're here for. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so we do have the virtual marketplace next Saturday. Yes. And and has put that information up in Instagram and it's on Facebook and uh, we'll send an email blast out about that. So, yep. so um, just a little bit of details about how it's going to work. If you haven't seen the posts on Facebook or in, in Instagram, or you had some questions, um, there's different slides up on my personal uh, Instagram page. Cause I added some information based on some feedback I got that, some things were missing. Um, so I tried to like make it as complete as possible. So um, it's gonna be on Zoom and the Zoom login and password is out on the social media information. So what'll happen is you'll come into the main room where I will be and we have two different vendors sort of every hour that are going to be in um, a breakout room. And in those breakout rooms, um, you can tell me which one you want to go to. You can move back and forth between them by coming back into the main room and asking to be um, moved to the other breakout room. Um, and the vendors have really just been kind of given free reign as to how they want to run their room when they're there for the hour. Um, I think some of them are just going to be answering questions and showing samples. I think Andra from Broco is going to have like a whole presentation um, slideshow thing, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, I've heard uh, rumors of maybe some coupons and I, so I'm kind of leaving each vendor up to their own like how they were going to handle sales, um, you know, what that's going to look like, uh, or if they're just showing products and then directing you to where you can get them later. Uh, so it's just a way to come see some yarn, see some project bags. Um, talk to the producers, um, interact with them, and just, you know, have fun time, or you come hang out with me in the main screen for, you know, whatever. Like, I'm going to be there from 10 to 2.30. <laughs> so, <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> be the Angela show, um, out on the main page. Uh, so, come, the list of who's uh, signed up for which time slots, um, I did provide a 10 minute break between each. Mostly that's for myself. So if I need to get up and um, go do something or just sort of that transition time of like closing down one room and then opening up the new room um, that, you know, we didn't have folks just sort of like, ah, it's not started yet. Um, so that you'll see that they're kind of staggered um, through the day. So I think there's four sessions of an hour each. Um, we have eight different vendors. Um, lots of them are folks you've seen before. We use their stuff for Seasons of Vermont. Like we carry their things in the store. Like they're, um, they're sort of our, our people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they've all agreed to come on and, and do this. Um, this would have been the retreat weekend uh, where they all would have been vending. And we just wanted to do something that was giving back to them and to the community and just allowing sort of this access. So the good news is even if you couldn't come to the retreat, you can check out the marketplace. Like, it'll be fun. It's virtual. So anybody can come. Mm -hmm. There's no charge. Yep. Um, just come check it out. See what's going on. Yep. Oh. And 
the day right before that. So that's the 15th, yes. the day right before Seasons of Vermont box number four is going live. Mm-hmm. So we'll, we're going to try to get a podcast in next week so we can show some of the fun stuff that's going in that box. Yep. Um, one is the pattern. I'll finally be able to show everybody what the pattern is. Maybe I'll have a sock by, done by then. That I there can you go. You. Oh my gosh. Um, so we've got all the fun goodies. Uh, those are all sh- uh, showing up at the store. Uh, we should have everything, I think, by I've seen some of them tomorrow. Cool. I think so. Yeah. There's some really, really cool stuff. Um, Maybe next week we could try to podcast like on a Wednesday and I can try to get it uploaded on Thursday so people can see yeah. or Wednesday or get it uploaded sooner than Friday morning so people yeah. can see. Um, yeah, so I think she's doing it at noon again. Um, that's kind of when the, the release happens. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so Where there's some we? really, really, really cool pieces in there. So can we talk about who's? I think so. So um, Fiber Stash has done the yarn for this box. Yep. Um, so we just, we love her stuff. It's so beautiful. And yeah. this, this is Fiber is- Stash that, that I'm using for my sa- sample. And I tried yeah. to pick one that was going to be similar-ish to the, to the actual one. But. Yep. Um, and Cat's Paws is doing the bag for us. So we've, mm-hmm. you've seen her bags before. They're usually yeah. beautiful. They're the panel bags. We mm-hmm. um, used a couple of them last go around of Seasons of Vermont. Um, we have stuff from Caitlin Birch, uh, Glassworks again, and yeah. from Elizabetta Studios um, as yeah. well. And some more uh, Lunaroma goodies. Mm-hmm. So, yep. So it's be fun. fun I know. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be good stuff again. So of course, I, yeah, I can't wait to see Christy's yarn. So I think that might be the only thing that I haven't. Well, I saw a little sneak I've peek of seen it. Seen a sneak peek of it, but her yarn is usually so much prettier in person. <laughs> I, I mean, the pictures are gorgeous, but like They're, to see it in person, you're just like, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, so I know. So that's exciting. So that's Friday. And then the virtual marketplace is Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget about our virtual knit groups that we've got going on. If you want to join, just um, send us a message and we'll yep. get you that information to log in. Probably in. better to give Kelly the message because I'll yeah. have to email her and be like, what's the login again? Or I have to go find it. She's mm-hmm. got it right at her fingertips. Mm-hmm. If you want it faster, contact Kelly. <laughs> Um, and, uh, if you want to take part in our fundraising campaign that's going on, uh, we are going to get back to our picks of the week, um, probably, probably coming up in September, I would say, um, because we are going to have some of the new yarn starting to show up and, uh, we, we do like to offer some of the new yarns as when we can. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And maybe we'll like rotate, like yeah. we'll keep doing the fundraiser. And so one week we'll show the fundraiser and the next week we'll do a pick of the week and they run for two weeks. So we'll mm-hmm. maybe do something like that. Yep. Yeah. So, so. We'll both. <clears throat> yeah. Because I think we've gotten enough, like people have been giving us donations of things mm-hmm. and we've got enough yarn that we've collected and other stuff to run probably. Yeah. A few more. <laughs> yeah. We might be able to even just go through at the end of the year. So that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Maybe we could pick some local, um, some of our local charities or not charities, yep. but organizations that we've done like the food drive for mm-hmm. now that that's going to be tough and yeah. challenging to do. Maybe we do a fundraiser yeah. for them. This Especially way. coming up into the holidays. That's mm-hmm. going to be, there's going to be some big challenges. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll do some, different charities and organizations than we've than we've done and some might be more locally based and yep. um, so a little bit different focus every once in a while um so yeah. we'll we'll do that because i think mix it up yeah mm-hmm. yeah spread the love so we'll do um we'll do the warmth with yarn cal again um i think we can manage that one even if probably still even if everybody gets locked down again because mail will still go it'll just be slower so well we hope um, so we hope the post office makes it um 
So we'll still, we'll do, do that one again. And that's where we collect hats and mittens and scarves and socks. We had a bunch of hand knit socks donated last yeah. year. We did the um, soap bags too. Those soap bags, soap sacks. Of. That was amazing. Yep. We've got a couple organizations here that we can um, donate that stuff to for um, segments of sort of the homeless population and people coming into shelters. Uh, so we'll do that again. We've had people mail us stuff from all over, but if you have a local place you can donate it, please do do there. We'll run it on Ravelry again so you can get entered for prizes um, yeah. if you donate locally. So. You know, this year we could probably even open it to mass people who want to sew masks, so masks and donate yep. those too. I'm yep. sure the shelters are always Neat. We're gonna need appreciative to, to have those too. So. Yep. Mm. Yep. Um, so, um, so we'll be restarting the warmth of the yarn cow. I just want to give everybody a heads up. We're doing it again. Mm -hmm. um, so if you've been knitting or crocheting or working on stuff all year, we, we will do collections again for that. Yep. So I've got awesome. some stuff tucked away, was knitting a lot of hats there for a while. <laughs> yep, you sure are. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> just checking the time. I know I was looking at it. Yeah, we both like, have meetings at 1130. So we have to wrap it up here. Wrap it up. But I don't really have much else to, to talk about. We actually kind of got a normalish length podcast. in. yeah, we, yeah. We, I actually had some stuff I could show and talk about. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Uh, so thank you everybody for stopping by and hanging out with us spending some time with yarn lollipop. Um, that's just became the title of our podcast. <laughs> You're in lollipop. Um, and we hope you had fun and enjoyed spending some time with us. And we appreciate all of our um, viewers and supporters and folks who comment. And even if you don't comment, um, you know, folks who enjoy spending some time and um, taking a little bit of time out of your day and your busy schedules to um, come knit with us so, or crochet. Yeah. It's fine. It's crochet is allowed. Okay. Like it. I, um, yeah, it wasn't bad. I haven't been knitting my crochet squares like I was once upon a time. You weren't um, knitting your crochet squares? No, I wasn't knitting my crochet squares. <laughs> Crocheting my <laughs> crochet squares. <laughs> That's really funny. I like that is it. funny. Um, still going with yarn lollipop, but, um, <laughs> uh, yes, it yeah. crochet has grown on me. Let's just we'll just leave it at that. It's grown on me. It's all about muscle memory and practice. Yeah. So. yeah. All right. Before this devolves any further, <laughs> thank you everyone, uh, and we will see you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I do too. I have to be mindful of the time. Okay, we'll both be mindful of the time. Because I have another thing that I have to get on. Another Zoom. Yep, me too. Zoom, <laughs> Zoom, Zoom, and a Zoom, a Zoom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. I know. Oh, no, my hedgehog fell off. Uh -oh. oh. Oh, no. Oh, no, my hedgehog pulled off its little thing. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. I, I'm pretty sure I can glue him back in. Okay. Little buddy. Can you see my little thing? <laughs> right oh, I have to glue him back in. Uh, apparently, I'm very hard on my progress keepers. <laughs> I pulled my little hedgehog off. Hey, little guy. Uh, it's not like I don't have other progress keepers. Well, yeah. I have, I keep finding them and I'm like, oh, why do I keep buying these things? <laughs> I have like so many of them. I'm, I, I'm kind of bad because like, I treat them like they're so precious and I don't want to use them because I don't want to lose them. Like, especially the, the handmade ones that I have, like some of the cute little clay ones or like this, or this clay one that I just broke. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just, so I'm so bad about using them. I'm like, what if I lose them? What if I break him? And I'm like, I got to stop being so precious with things. They're meant to be used. And I bought them because I like them and they make me happy when yeah. 
I mean, you gotta, you gotta treat it like your hand knits, right? Like yeah. they're meant to be used and that means that they'll get broken or something will happen to them. And, um, so just, I know. So Kelly, I'm, I'm down to when I finish this tube, taking the, the, the tube that's flashing that I'm not going to use for this out, I have one tube left. I have gotten wow. all of those, but don't worry. Look, <laughs> I have, I have a bag for you. Exciting. <laughs> I'm going to try to bring it up and drop it off just so you have it um, cool. so I can get it out of my house so I'm not looking at it and having people look at it and being like, what are you doing with that yarn? Be like, oh. um, I'm working all day on Saturday, so if you get it up to the shop, I can grab it if, if you're not okay. going to be out towards my house. Okay. I may bring it, um, drop it at the shop today. Okay. And then um, I might be in there later today too. It depends on if it's going to be, if it's really busy there, then I'm going to pop in this afternoon and add okay. extra coverage. Okay, cool. But if you're there Saturday, I'll just put it on your desk. Okay, cool. So that's what that is. Sweet. Or I might drop it off tomorrow. Okay. We'll see. It never works, but yes, I've been knitting sock tubes. <gasps> I've just been knitting these little shorty socks. Um, those are, those are good too. I've been using the sock tubes to knit shorty socks. Mm -hmm. So with some of them, I've just been doing, um, shorter, shorter cuts. Yeah. So. But I can get a good couple of pairs out of a tube. Cool. Yeah. I don't put crazy long cuts on mine anyway. Like yeah, this is probably about as long as I would do for a cup. Yeah, that looks about like what I do. I usually, it ends up being around 20 or so rounds for me, mine. I usually don't do much more than like an inch and a half or so. Sometimes I've done them like two inches, but. Yeah, I just I don't, don't need them that tall. Yeah. So, so I got all kinds of random stuff going on here today <laughs> for the podcast. I picked out yarn for the Sharon show. Did you? Nice. Did. I went, I went into stash. I did find yarn in stash. Cool. I was all yeah. like, I was like, I don't have solid colors of yarn. Uh, okay. That's <laughs> actually true. Or ones that behave as solid. Ooh, that's fun. Look at that fun. Yeah. Fun Is that one. kind of like a tealy green? The one kind of in the yeah wow. yeah yeah that's 100 ravens green. that's pretty Ooh, i like it kind of not cool. my normal palette but i'm kind of digging it yeah me too that's very cool yeah so i, I like clearly have to get this wound before um <laughs> well i guess there's no rush um sharon from security could care less that whole thing that is so super creative that whole oh my God. stick with the Sharon from security and Jean from IT and like it, it's it's taken a life it's taken a life of its own at this it point has. yeah it has it's pretty funny I'm pretty sure that was supposed to be a decrease round and I'm not paying attention <laughs> Uh, chitty, chitty, chatty, and not paying attention. Oh, wait, what was I? Oh, it was good. knit group. Was it knit group? Not last night, last week. I was working on, I was working on, I think, the toe of the socks. And I just kept knitting around. I'm like, oh, man. And so I picked it back. And I'm like, okay, this is a decrease round. I have to decrease this round. And I just picked it up and started knitting again. So I had to pull it back. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I need to concentrate for like five minutes. That's it. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I think um, we fared relatively well uh, from that hurricane and storm. And yeah. storm. We just got a bunch of rain. 
Yeah, we got a ton of rain. We got um we got some wind down here actually. Unfortunately, the only bad really bad thing that happened is um the plastic that we put on that frame mm -hmm. for our greenhouse. It it shredded, the top of it shredded. Um I think it was just like there was just enough movement in it that it it kept yeah. rubbing against the top and it just it just <laughs> cracked. So well, but I mean, I guess if that's the worst thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And all of the plants survive. So like, you know, none of the plants got damaged that were in. That's in good. Life, so. That's yeah. good. Yeah, we actually, um, on the barn addition that we're doing, because we were really worried about the winds because we didn't know what the extent of the winds were going to be. We mm -hmm. actually got all of the, the joists in because we wanted to stabilize it as much as possible. So it was good motivation. We I think was it when when was did that come through? That came through Tuesday. So it was Monday Tuesday. night. We ended up we both like got up and like got to work really early so that we could kind of clock out early. And about I think it was like three, three thirty, we just like went to work and got the rest of the joists in and worked until about, I don't know, seven, seven between seven and eight and got that done and Yeah. I mean, you know, not to say that we didn't need the rain because we desperately yeah, needed the rain. We did. Um, but I know everything is looking so much greener here now because even that, that rain that we got, I don't know, last week or the week before, it helped, but yeah. we've just been so low on the amount of rain we've had this summer that this actually made a big difference. And I'm like, oh, look, the grass is actually coming back. I know. <laughs> Things actually look happy again. No. Yeah. And it's so hard here. I mean, it's a good, it's a good bad thing here, but we're all sand, like completely sand. Mm -hmm. So we, it's really good drainage. So when we do have a wet year, it's, it's phenomenal because we don't have to worry about, um, you know, a lot of mud or anything. Yeah. But for some, for a year like this, where it's so dry, like our this entire year. lawn was brown. And right. The soil doesn't hold any moisture at all. We have clay. We have mostly clay and ledge. So it yeah. holds better. Yeah. Um, Which is most of what Vermont is. Yeah. But yeah. because I'm in this like narrow little strip along Lake Champlain, you know, we, we, it, the, the your, soil is definitely a little bit different. Former lake bed. That's mm -hmm. when the yeah. lake was wider. Yeah. So. Nice. So, but it's glad. I'm glad because the sheeps are coming and they need some grass seed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yikes. I mean, right? I've I've got hay and I can buy more if I have to, but it's uh it's nice to not have to if you can feed them grass. Right, because grass is free. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> That's, that's kind of how I'm feeling today. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, for the, you know, the <laughs> on my phones, and I'm just going to do it again. <laughs> uh, so I saw the funniest thing online last night. Um, <laughs> seriously, it's, it's where it was worth reading just for the Q&A. So if you go, to, it was one of those advertisements that you get on Facebook, and I never click through because I, because it just, it, it just means that more of them come up and you get targeted. Yeah. More. But I will take right down the website and I will go independently to the website to like look up stuff that I think is kind of cool or that I want to look at more. So um, the website was called Nip Yada. So it's N-I-P-Y-A-T-A dot com. And it was literally, they were selling a pinata filled with nips for grownups um it's super expensive and you could totally do your own for way cheaper but <laughs> the q a that they have on the website is oh hysterical oh my god somebody uh was having way too much fun <laughs> uh is all i can say um so if you need a good chuckle uh definitely go check it out um super funny yeah. Uh, so there might be a, there might be one in the works uh, with some friends 
of mine we're just gonna make our own because we're handy nice. we're, we're DIY like that <laughs> yep <laughs> you'll have to post the, like the the Pinterest the Pinterest hopefully success not Pinterest fail I have lots of Pinterest fails <laughs> especially when it comes to craft projects Pinterest is a is a liar is all I can say. <laughs> But then you have to wonder, you know, how many takes it took the person to get to the, like, the perfect pretty one that they actually I, post. I, I think that's the bigger question. Is yeah. That, um, yeah, because I've had a number of Pinterest craft project fails. It's funny. It, um, my, my husband was, was show, showed me a picture the other night of this, like, entryway, and it was, you know, it's very styled. And it had some caption about like being functional or something. And he's like, now if this was functional, he's like, there would be like some boots over there and a jacket over there. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, it always bothers me when they, you know, have these. It, it's always so sterile. I'm like, yeah. it doesn't look like people live there. I know. It's so funny because there's a, there's kind of a funny meme going around and it always makes me chuckle about like, you know, this, look at this beautiful farmhouse kitchen, and it, it should say farmhouse style kitchen because it's not. People are like, it's not a true farmhouse kitchen. There'd be syringes in the sink, and there'd be, you know, this over there and that over there if it was a true farmhouse <laughs> kitchen. Uh, in a small farmyard animal in a corral in the corner of the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> Muddy boots and yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. 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 I know I see those pictures sometimes of like, you know, kids toys organization things. And I'm like, I seriously, these people that make these things don't actually have kids. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, no. Uh huh. That's what people who don't have kids think will work. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or, or the children will participate in this. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, I've seen, I've seen the way my kids put away books on the bookshelf, right? And I'm just like, what? Why? You see how all the other ones are put away? And you put this one like, like sideways that? and backwards and like stacked oh. up. I'm like, that's why. Why? No. Uh huh. Yeah. Much. <laughs> Very much. But so thank you everybody for the birthday wishes a couple weeks ago. Loved all the comments. Um, they're really appreciated. Thank you. I feel like it was just yesterday that we podcast, but it's been like two weeks. I know, isn't that wild? It is wild. And it's August now. Well, and the days just kind of really blend together. Like I was thinking about that because I was like, oh gosh, it's like, what day is it? I'm like earlier yeah. this week, I was like, it's only Monday. Like, <laughs> I know it forever. is forever. You know, it's funny because I was thinking about it the other day because like Tuesday was my day off. And now that I'm mostly working from home and I go into the shop when I need to cover or whatever, do some payroll or whatever. Um, that's a nice thing is all of our, our shop stuff is cloud-based. So I can do right. so much of it from, from home. Yeah. But yeah. like Tuesday was my day off. So that was the day I went to the grocery store and I ran all my errands and I did this and I did that. And so now a lot of times since I'm working from home, I get up at usually between 5.30 and 6 every day. I go feed my, all my animals, do all my chores, and then eat breakfast and then I get to work and I'm, I'm start work at like 6 30 mm -hmm. and then you know so then I, I work for a shorter amount of time so then sometimes I'll you know go and do my errands like one in the afternoon when I'm done doing the work that I need to do and and or my schedule is just so flex like mm -hmm. you know I fit things in when I can and so it's just it's really weird. So I, that, that for me, like all the dates really just do run together. Just run together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm back at my office Monday through Friday. So that's 
sort of creates some level of schedule, but I still just find that those days run together quite yeah. a bit. Like today I was like, it's Thursday, tomorrow, Friday. Like, oh my I God, today's Thursday. <laughs> like, I know. But that's yeah, interesting times. Yeah. I know. I know everybody's having a really hard time, you know, deciding what they're going to do about school. Some schools just aren't giving people choices. They're just saying, this is what yeah. is going to happen. And other schools are, are, a lot of them are doing either all online, they're doing a hybrid option, or they're doing in person, or they're trying to do in person, but, um, yeah, we've opted for, I guess, what is the hybrid option? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the in-person for two days and two days. home yeah. for the rest, um, which I guess is the in-person option. It's not nobody's full five days in person mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, just because like he, he needs that interaction yeah. with other kids in person. Um, severely <laughs> yeah he is a social little guy you know so oh yeah both of my kids are yeah um yeah. yeah that at home for three months with just your family was very challenging for everybody yeah um so but yeah we'll see i mean i i'm fully expecting that what what is being presented may not be what it ends up looking like or that it ends up changing very quickly I think you know we just we as I keep trying to instill in my children we need to be learn to be flexible about things because there's certain stuff that we just we don't have control over and we need to just roll with it and make the best of whatever situation we're in yeah um so I don't know we'll see yeah Let's see how it goes it's gonna be interesting um it's gonna be interesting to see what the colleges end up doing too I mean right yeah. now kids are starting to come back for UVM mm -hmm. and it, it'll it'll be interesting to see I know there's people you know taking bets of the day when it's going to go to all online because yeah you know I, it's just probably a matter of time so. yeah so I don't know we'll see um, but well I suppose should we should we get this podcast underway yeah yeah i don't really have any fun funny stories other than the nip yada that was the best i have right now <laughs> i uh i i got my little shy rooster bert integrated with the older gal oh nice so he's not sure he wants to be in there with them but he's you know they're making it work they're actually just kind of ignoring them they don't really they don't really care and he's making a bigger deal of it than they are they're like whatever man you just, just do your chill thing out. we'll 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 do our thing just leave us and, alone like so, i know he keeps pacing back and forth along the fence line looking at the the smaller area where i had him and i'm like buddy look at all this great room you've got you've got some great grass to go and check out and he's like but somebody might touch me <laughs> Like even if one of the hens just like walks by him, he's like, <gasps> <laughs> he is the most shy rooster. And then I think, I think he was really, really mad at me because he's not aggressive. He's, he's really kind of a, he's, he's funny. Like I've not met a rooster that's like as timid and shy as he is. And I know he's young, so, you know, I don't know if that's some of it or what, but so I went in there the other day and I was, um, topping off their water this time of year with it being so hot they, they drink quite a bit of water and uh so I went up to him just to check on him and I was like hey Bert how's it going and he like walked over to me looked at my boot and like started jumping up and down on my boot like I've got like big muck boot kind of boots and he was like jumping up and down on my boot and then started pecking it I'm like I'm really sorry that you're in here with all these lovely ladies now I'm really sorry I'm like, but it's for the best. You want, you can't be by yourself all the time. And uh, I'll show you. I'm gonna stomp on your boot. I know. Fuck you. I 
was laughing so hard. So I have had a rooster like come at me and when they really like seriously aggressively come at you, it's kind of terrifying, even though they're like, you know, this big, but still, but he wasn't, it wasn't like, <laughs> he was just throwing a little temper tantrum. That's what it looked like. And I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Stop my rooster foot. And I'm going to show you. <laughs> he, was, he was hilarious. I was nice. like, okay, buddy, you take out your, <laughs> your emotions on me. It's fine. It's fine. You can have your little temper tantrum and then you'll be okay. <laughs> nice. So. Nice. Yep. All right. Are we ready? I think so. But we've, had, we've had lots and lots and lots of like outtakes at the end of just, just chit chatting and like 20 minutes of the actual podcast. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Wow. Well. It's fine. It's okay. I have a little bit more to talk about today, which is a good thing. I do too. What happens when we don't have, podcast for two weeks? I know. I even have a finished object that I did in like one day. <laughs> I, I have an FO too. <gasps> And then like lots of random bits and bobs of other stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, cool. All right. All right, are we ready? I think so. Okay. okay.